Sister Laura again. Hope you guys are all doing great. Today we're going to continue with the book of Jonah. I know, again, Jonah, right? But we're not done with his story. We still need three more lessons. And today's lesson is called, Jonah Returns to God. So let's open up our Bibles to Jonah chapter 2. So we've been learning about one of God's prophets named Jonah, right? What is a prophet? A prophet is a prophet is God's servant who takes God's message to the people. God gave his prophet Jonah specific instructions. God had a plan for Jonah's life and Jonah didn't like it. You guys remember that? He rebelled and sinned against what God wanted him to do. Sin interferes with God's plans for our lives, but nothing can stop God's plans. God loves all people. It was never his plan for people to sin and to suffer the punishment of sin. The Ninevites were living wicked lives and God wanted them to be to have an opportunity to turn from their sins so they would not have to be punished um, by their wick because of their wickedness. Nothing would stop God's plan to allow the Ninevites to hear and have the opportunity to repent and turn away from their sins. Since Jonah was rebelling against God's instructions, God could instruct another person to go and preach or could change Jonah's heart and continue to use him for his work. In this circumstance, God chose to work in Jonah's life and change his heart. God began to work um, in Jonah and he would be faithful to complete that work. However, Jonah chose to disobey God did not allow Jonah's disobedience to stop him from doing what he planned to do. God chose to immediately discipline Jonah for his disobedience. Do you remember how God disciplined Jonah for his disobedience? Yep, you got that right. Uh, he was thrown into the sea. Remember he was in that ship and there was a big old storm and it wouldn't stop? Well, he got thrown into the sea and he got swallowed by a big fish. The word discipline means a punishment um, inflicted by a way of correction and training. As a child of God, when we sin against him, we will be disciplined. God disciplines his children because he loves them and knows what is best for them. And we can find that in Hebrews 12. His purpose is dis in disciplining his children is to correct them and teach them when um, teach them the way to live a life that pleases him. Believers sometimes get angry with God when life doesn't go the way we think it should. Sometimes we think like the instruct. Sometimes we don't like. I'm sorry. Uh, sometimes we don't like the instructions he has given us, so we choose to go a different direction than um, what he has told us to go. Sin always causes our relationship with God to suffer. When we allow sin to control our hearts, we cannot be close to God and be used by him. We begin to maybe not read our Bibles or to pray less. Um, we may even choose to spend more time with unbelievers and begin to act and talk like an unbeliever. God will punish sin in the life of his children. God disciplines his children because he desires them to repent or to turn away from sin and return to a close relationship with him. God is a loving and patient heavenly father. He does not punish us as our sins deserve. When we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. And we 
can find that in 1 John 1, 9. So now let's turn our books to John, I'm sorry, Jonah, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And listen in on what Jonah is up to now. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, when I was in trouble, I called out to you, and you answered me. When I had almost drowned, I called out for help, and you listened to my cry. You threw me into the Mediterranean Sea. I was in the middle of its waters. They, they were all around me. All of your rolling waves were sweeping over me. I said, I have been driven away from you. But I will look again towards your holy temple in Jerusalem. I had almost drowned in the waves. The deep waters were all around me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. I sank down to the bottom of the mountains. I thought I had died and gone down into the grave forever. But you brought my life up from the very edge of the pit. You are the Lord my God. When my life was nearly over, I remembered you, Lord. My prayer rose up to you. It reached you in your holy temple in heaven. Some people worship the worthless statues of their gods. They turn away from the grace you want to give them. But I will sacrifice a thank offering to you. And I will sing a song of thanks. I will do that. I will do what I have promised, Lord. You are the one who saves. The Lord gave the fish a command, and it spit Jonah up into dry land. So the belly of the great fish was like a timeout chair for Jonah. God put him there because he wanted Jonah to turn from sin and return to God. Jonah didn't have a lot of choices of things to do inside the fish's belly, did he? He could no longer run away from God's plan for him. What did he choose to do? He prayed. Can you think of what else Jonah could have chosen to do? He could have become angry with God and spent the, that time inside the fish feeling sorry for himself, but he didn't. Jonah's choice is what we all should do if we are God's children. When we are in difficult situations, whether it is because we are being disciplined um, for disobedience, we should always turn to God for prayer. We are going to look at two things Jonah, from Jonah's prayer. He teaches us two very important truths about prayer. The first thing we learn about Jonah's prayer is in Jonah 2.2. 2. It is that God hears all of our cries. We read, oops. Uh, when I was in trouble, I called out to you and you answered me. When I had almost drowned, I called out for help and you listened to my cry. Jonah also teaches us in Jonah 2.9 that when we pray, we should have an attitude of thankfulness. But I will sacrifice a thank offering to you, and I will sing a song of thanks. I will do what I have promised, Lord. You are the one who saves. When we sin against God, we need to cry out to him and confess our sins. He promises to forgive us. If our sin is disobedience, we need to ask God to help us obey. You can ask other believers to pray for you if you continue to struggle with disobedience. Memorizing scripture about obedience to God will help us when we are tempted to disobey. We should always have an attitude of thankfulness. If you struggle with thankfulness, you can spend time in your daily quiet time with God writing things in your journal or little post-it notes like these on what you are thankful for. You will be a 
amazed at the many things you actually can thank God for. As Jonah spent three days and three nights in the belly of that fish, he responded appropriately to God's discipline for him. God's discipline brought him to the place where he repented of his sins and turned back to God. He decided that he was going to let God be the boss of his life. He was now back in the position for God to use him for his purpose. As we continue to study the book of Jonah, we will see how God uses him for his work. So I would encourage you to read the entire book of Jonah in your quiet time so you can allow God to continue to teach you throughout this week. And you can kind of find out and be ahead of the next study. I hope you guys enjoyed this study. See you guys next Sunday. Bye.